the despair planted by a history of dictatorships, bloodshed and the HIV AIDS scourge has sprouted into a deadly plague in Uganda. Under the clutches of disease and death, desperation birthed a potent mixture of religion and rebellion in the mid-1980s. Occults preaching a message about the end of the world fanned the flames. On March 17, 2000, ringleaders of a doomsday cult in Kanungu, a remote outpost in western Uganda, incinerated hundreds of people after prediction that the world would end on January 1, 2000. Angry that they had sold all their belongings to ascend to heaven, the largely peasantry flock had demanded answers from Joseph Chiwetere and his acolytes before they were killed. Bart Kakoza, who owns a production house, Media Plus, and is a broadcast trainer, recently made a film about the Kanungu massacre. Massacre or the Kanungu cult is one of the biggest religious tragedies that we witnessed at the turn of the century. Hundreds of people died. Not because, initially not because they were they were murdered initially, but it was a gradual process of killing people. Either those were killed because they had defied the predictions and the so-called orders that were given from the Marian apparitions that Caledonia the woman claimed to have. Yet before the scow in the national conscience hills, a new breed of preachers who use a message of fire and brimstone to scheme from unsuspecting flock has emerged. If you cannot do anything with 10,000 for yourself, how could you sow that so that God will give you a house? In 10,000? It doesn't work like that. I'm praying that some of you can be able to pray just a million, two million, five million, ten million, and beyond. In 2006, Joseph Kachomukasa claims he met Pastor Makumbi, who gave him a lift to his place in Reza on Entebbe Road. Kacho alleges that it's here that Makumbi agreed to offer him work where you are supposed to stage manage events in church. Kacho was given instructions to purport that he was a cannibal who drank human blood and had traveled to Tanzania to be initiated in the murky world of devil worship. Naja kuchalo chino mwaka kwa bili mkaga Ya nisanga wa baganda vange Mimaro basa anga wa Ntumaro kuri ya kasente Nando sechi unama kumawa tegedi Tandi kumuli mugwe na kutuma Ugo kutambulo wele Chanzibu wali ya kuchalo cha sechi no Nenso kaninya nenzila yeri kumwale chihindi Kwa yeri kuchizinga kukwaya Yawe natu keyo Wa itawiche emu nenzi jame mpali Nita niko kutambulo wele Nita niko kutambulo wele Na chiko la ndozo mwezi mulamba ni bantu wala kewo msamize Nga wama nyimbutufu ngude dalu nenga nze Na limo saja mulamu The bishop ostensibly healed him from the spirits of cannibalism after he appeared in church. Mm-hmm. Na dutuwa marizo kwa uwelewe natuka, natuka tali uwo Uwe msirikale ya liwo na mkubile simu Na mkubile simu ya nangu wa mangosawa wangemu na atuka Na atuka na ngamba mchimucho na uchimaze kwanze uchimaze Na ambuzo gudi dali kwanze ndi gudi Na ambuzo ufunyebu ino uwoku wabasa mize kwanze uchimucho na mfunyebu ino Wanga bantu teko mochi mumasabo ni mara yoko mpi wiki bili Kakati na ngamba njagale ncha ojengo msamize mchachi Bulicho nache tubade tuko loku kola binobyo na chino chechi nyusi chencha kusande in turn, Kato claims he was paid 500,000 shillings for this work. Kato says he later disagreed with Makumbi because he felt he was being cheated. In order to corroborate this information, in 2016, Makumbi filed a temporary injunction against tabloids that had published what he says was defamatory. In the application, his lawyers claimed that Kato who was once a born-again Christian knew that the published statements that he had uttered against Makumbi were serious allegations against a pastor who had delivered him from practicing witchcraft. I reached out to Makumbi to get his side of the story. He accuses Kato 
of abusing his generosity by attempting to blackmail him. He came here, he said, I'm, I'm not a born again, I've been a witch. So we prayed for him, he got saved, it's two years, I mean, six months later he left like any other church because we don't keep people here. So he came, Kato came and he's like, I'm gone. I'm, um, I, for three months, I've left. Let me go look for something to do. And you see that the damage he has done is terrible. And you, rea you, you ask yourself, why do you go on doing that? The actions of Kato had far-reaching consequences. In the far-flung Buaya Islands in Lake Victoria, locals accused the stepmother of Kato of bewitching him. This is after Kato returned to the islands and began behaving strangely to fit into his newly adopted character as a cannibal. On this rickety canoe, we commenced our journey on the pale blue waters of the lake. Alongside Kato's stepmother, it took us about two hours to reach our destination. Once at the island, we tried to establish contact with authorities. But those who had grabbed Kato's stepmother's land turned rowdy and threatened to lynch us unless we immediately left. One of those who lived here agreed to speak to us once we returned to the landing site where the journey to the islands began. <laughs> It's about six years since Christine fled her place of abode in the far flung Bukwaya Islands after an angry mob threatened to lynch her. Even after years have gone by, the seeds of discord planted by the allegations continue to sway public opinion against her. Omukazi yali angambi enti chovu kora tambura buta ambuzi to ingira na mungu. Nali njagara mu akanya na ngamba to akanya biangi. Tambura vo ya galovura mukwe rane tambura rau zendo zaza. Tetele tetele amani ukoi sabwa tio. Kuvanga nali ne chivani. Ya kuata gana ne Josephu ne baguza guza abantu abantu vachiri mamu no kuzimba mumba zimba. When I didn't bear up as in Bowenju, a rojiradi. Cathy, I love you, car. Well, I love you, guns, the Nevana Mauli, a roses and in the Zekufuna, with Julie Zikuba Vunana. Through various correspondences, we established that Kato had never traveled to Tanzania. He also did not have a history of strange behavior. In 2016, Pisna Nangwe discovered that her daughter was having a lot of pain. When she probed her father, the 15-year-old girl then claimed she had been defiled by Bishop Makumbi. She was rushed to hospital where a number of checkups were conducted. She was also referred to Mulago Hospital because she was bleeding. <laughs> Kwanjeri Later, some security personnel raided her home where they found her daughter and instructed her to hand over some of the documents from hospital. 
Another police officer abducted Nanangwe's daughter and cut her off to Tabika Hospital to ostensibly carry out a mental examination on her. Gilbert ya inaitwe bwana. Babatu alomwana angipaka kutabika, baba kuwa mwana, mula muwabu ongo wazila kuchiko sefu, edaba amuiza. This case was later referred to Kajansi Police Station near Lueza, where the bishop's church is located. Nanangwe alleges that the police officers who appeared to be acting under instructions accused her of making false accusations against the pastor. Nanangwe and her daughter later appeared before the chief magistrate's court of Entebbe at Kajansi where they were found guilty of giving false information, an offense under the Penal Code Act. Nanangwe was cutted off to Kigo Prison, a prison for hardcore criminals and terror suspects. Her daughter was detained at Nagu Remand Center in what appears was a traversity of justice. <laughs> I visited Kajansi police station to try and speak to the detective who handled this case. With the aid of a secret camera, I reached to the officer in charge who pleasantly welcomed me and revealed that he was not at the station when this case was probed. He gave us the contact of the officer who handled the case. When we telephoned him, the CID detective promised to come to the station in 30 minutes time. He, however, did not turn up and failed to pick his phone. Searching for more cogent evidence, we traced this police officer who handled this case in Impiji district. This is what he had to say. Narongo called us uh, on 116 that uh, her daughter, they have a high-profile case involving a certain high-profile pastor and uh, the girl is facing threats. They have abducted her twice and there are so many threats of abducting her. They abducted her and removed the medical form. Now when I heard that, I said if they can abduct and remove uh, medical form, which means the next time they can abduct maybe and kill her or and do anything to destroy evidence. What we did, I immediately consulted her, can you come over to us at Kireka offices at Uganda Child Helpline and we hear from you. She came, reaching Chileka, uh, we interviewed, I interviewed her personally, she explained it to me that uh, the case is involved uh, a person called Bishop Makumbi whom I didn't know, I had never met and what I did, I said now what we can do, we can put this uh, uh, victim in a safe place. In his response, Makumbi claims these are yet other concocted stories meant to tarnish his name. That allegation about the young lady that I defiled, first of all, she came to, she has never been to my house. She said, according to the papers that I read, that she came to my house and slept with my daughter, which is very impossible. Impossible. No one can let a stranger he does not know to sleep with his child. Number two, when the police was asking her where, whether she knows Makumbi's house, where she went, she took them to a place which I've never been to. And the police was like, where is the house? These are the things, you know, there are wrong people behind us. That's why I tell people in life that even if you do not know that you have enemies, you have enemies. The conduct of these pastors and their lavish lifestyles has thrust them in the crosshairs. Prophet Kakande of the Synagogue Church of All Nations is quite a wealthy man. His critics accuse him of fleecing his flock. However, his servants claim he's an anointed man of God who has been blessed. In our attempt to unravel the truth and acting on a tip-off, we traveled to Busoga where we pretended to be pastors who want to hire people to stage acts in church and in turn pay them. At first, I used the secret camera to try and record events at this home in the deeper recesses of Busembatia in Iganga. But upon persuasion, these men accepted to give us an insight of their capabilities on camera under the false belief that we would hire them. To agendo wa pasita kakande, eda bi mwala ba, siju kila bulunji naku na ye vanga wete gireza katambi, na vanzi jamu mutoka, na geza kukuruwa nisa bakanyama wa pasita kakande, ukubala ganti amanyi givalina, 
matundu ya sobola ku sobola nze wa dindi muntu wa mu district yo muchalo era abo na kozza manya manji naipa nenda banga omukulembeze wawe na leta ateba abakanya mabalala abanku ata ne bansiwe migwa ya makono na maguru ne banteka munda ya pastor kakane na na sabira na ne bansabira nti ndokoke mvwe muli etemuli alinga ndi abantu era nga ndi musezi okay katembo yonze na zanya nga musezi mm ali omusawuzi era nga musezi ali abantu obukodi obukubuyingira mu okay na laba era na na training bwa na abantu era abalala oku okay nali na magezi naye na yongera mu kama magezi atamalala oku training oku training ne nyongera ku ebi nali na byo ne nkuguka nti manyo kuzanya katemba obo busezi era no no obusa uno musa no omusawuzi omusa bagamba omusawuzi era no musezi ali abantu nange nali musajja muslim nyo Naenga sifuanga mubisira mubu wangi mm. Newera yu msajja wamu yita Eliasa mm. Seka mm. Najja na atu yisamu wakarangu na agamba banai Wali wadiru na ye Efuna siya kupa mm. Na ye ya kuzanya wa mzanyo na uli oko jirachi Ofuna mm. Netumugamba diru cheyo na agamba wai Zijia ulala nemba somesa mubu wiki singemu No kuasa chengendo kusomesa ne nkusitula no gen anya riwa pasta kakande ne tulio katufunachi senti ah twabero luna kulumu na tuita na tukunganya na tusomesa eranze ya nsomesa ogwo ogwo kulia abantu to corroborate this information we spoke to this young boy whose identity we shall conceal he's amongst those who has paid a paltry fee to put up an act at Kakande's church. They get you from the car and they put they put you into the church. They they make sure that you are rest they put you to rest there for more than five hours or a day. To be there like a cannibals. Then the pastor on Sunday come and and starts pouring onto your head some water you 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 start behaving like a real cannibal the, he has bodyguards which can get you if you are too strong they get you they squeeze you they even beat mm. you, they can even beat you they can tie they can tie ropes on you and they leave you there if you if you are showing too much energy attempting to get his side of the story prophet kakande's spokesperson agreed to meet me and my colleague at serena hotel a few meters away from my office at the conference center we revealed to her that all we are interested in was to get a response from the church against what we had unraveled which we described to her in detail the lady said she was uncomfortable with an interview I told her she could put her response in writing. Since then, she has not filed a response and hardly picks her cell phone. Pastor Gustin Iga runs the Revival Christian Church in Kawala. On Sundays, he gets to church at about 1 p.m. to preach. I visited his church while undercover. During service, all sorts of assortment, including bread, is sold under the guise that those who purchase it will receive miracles. On Tuesdays, it's a special day of prayer and healing at his church. The sick who are suffering from ailments such as cancer, those seeking visas, and the desperate come here to be prayed for. It's an elaborate scheme where his servants at the church pick only those who have paid a sum of at least 100,000 shillings to be prayed for. Using my secret camera, I was able to record the events. I was amongst the others who paid for an envelope and later chewed to register my name. Later, Yiga's employees carried out an inspection to ensure that the money was safely tucked away in the envelope before he prayed for us. 
It's here that my secret camera's battery went out. When NTV interviewed him about why he asks for money before he can pray for the ailing, this was his response. contribution <laughs> This is what transpired at the Miracle Center Church. This young man in this video footage is seen telling Pastor Kayanja that he gave birth to five pairs of twins and amongst them was a python. One of them was a python. No man, I'm a Veda. And one child had four breasts. It was at 9.25. No man, I'm a Veda. No man, I'm a Veda. No man, I'm a Veda. So I stayed with the Pisces. Everything I do does not succeed. My mom is close to you. She's called Ajat Nurumpungu. She sells clothes. That's my dad's name. Ne pastor. Whatever I do doesn't succeed. Nurumpungu, a businesswoman, is accusing this young man of defaming her after he falsely claimed that she is his mother. Police spokesperson Asan Kasinje says Pentecostal pastors should face prosecution if there's cogent evidence that they fleece their flock. There are laws that govern anybody, whether it is church, whether it is anybody. Um, there, is, there is a law that governs um, um, any member of society or any organization uh, getting money from members of the public. It, it, it must be it must not be done in a fraudulent in a fraudulent manner because once you do it fraudulently then you have committed an offense defrauding anybody of his or her possessions including money in the guise of religion or any other thing is, is illegal but then they warned me when we met for counseling and they called me that was uh, in the holiday second term holiday of, of 1988. <coughs> they called me for counseling and told me that Brother Mali, God has told us to work with you. You'll see a lot of things. But if you ever expose any, you'll die. I'd seen people testifying. They had been cured. They had been healed. I'd seen Kakana and his wife tell uh, people who were allegedly demon possessed oh the demon is on the head it has moved in the breast it has moved in the abdomen come out and then you see someone shaking and then finally falling oh and i thought that was the real power of god but my experience with them kakana and his wife lois this is what i saw faking up of miracles paying people to pretend to be demon possessed Paying people to pretend to be sick. The actual sick would come and go away unhealed. I saw and partook of many tricks of extortion. Where I would tell people that God has told us that you saw a seed of faith. Yet with the wealth that have accumulated, some of these pastors have been able to buy influence and clout. One more shout of praise tonight. In Uganda, religion is largely interwoven within the national fabric. However, authorities have not clearly defined the confines of religious practice. Though the Kanungu massacre took place 17 years ago, it reminds us of the perils that can arise as a result of not controlling fanatism. Emmanuel Mutaizewa, NTV.